me record to this computer and we're recording. Go ahead, Lisa. Excellent. All right. Welcome to session C2 of Flip Tech 2021. Uh, we are here to talk about podcasting and how that can be implemented into the classroom. So you're not here to listen to me. I'm going to turn it over to our presenter, Yasmin. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat, and I will be sure to bring them to Yasmin's attention. So uh, with no further ado. Okay, great. So hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining my session this evening. So um, I'm not sure how many of you have had a chance to uh, take a look at, at the free work, um, but I figured what I would do was just uh, review a few of the highlights and just kind of see um, if you guys had specific questions. Uh, but there are also a few questions that I have uh, prepared ahead of time, you know, just to, to kind of get a little bit of a conversation going. And so what I will do is drop those into uh, the chat so that you guys can uh, maybe be, yeah, it looks like more than it is, just <laughs> four questions there. Um, <laughs> so um, yeah, just so that uh, you guys can uh, kind of be ruminating on, on some of those, uh, some of those questions. And of course, um, any additional questions that you have um, in terms of the content. Okay, so let me just go ahead and uh, dive in and start to share my screen. Okay, so uh, again, just in case uh, some of you have not had a chance to see the free work. Okay, so today we're talking about maximizing the podcast and we're talking about how it fits into um, two theoretical frameworks, which are the mutually adaptive uh, learning and also uh, SOFLA, okay? So uh, first I'm gonna go ahead and start with um, the tech, okay? Um, just kind of review that, all right? Just to see if you guys have some questions about that, but here we go. Hello everyone and welcome to this brief tutorial on how to use Anchor FM to record your podcast. So first you go to the App Store in order to get the free app. And I already have it here, so let's take a look. This is the front uh, page showing my different episodes here. But let's go ahead and go to tools because this is where all the magic happens. So when I hit tools, we can see a variety of the different features for this app. So we have voice messages, which is where your listeners can uh, record any responses to your content. And then we have music from Spotify, which you can use to jazz up your podcast episodes. And then we have record, which is where all the magic happens. And here you can invite friends to join. I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that so that students can collaborate um, by recording together from a distance, which is the whole purpose of this. Yes. So when I do this, uh, the audio will go out for a moment, but I would like to show you how it works. Okay, so as you could see there, there were a variety of ways that you could invite somebody to participate in your recording. And the other person doesn't necessarily have to have Anchor in order to participate. They can just click on the link and they are automatically invited to record. Now let's take a look at the library, very important because it's where all of the audio that you record is stored. And the magic here is these three little buttons where you can trim, and uh, start an endpoint. You can edit your audio. You could splice it up, things like that. You can add background music, rename the segment, all of those things. So to just briefly take a look at the trim audio option, you could say, oh, let's start this here. Let's end this here. Okay, so that's just a brief look at that. And then if you don't want to use Spotify, you can use their cute little interlude uh, music here. Uh, for your background, or you can use some sounds to transition between your segments. Okay, so uh, now let's go ahead and just do a brief sample of a recording. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Yasmin's Grammar Class Podcast. All right, now you want to add some background music to that, let's say. Let's go with some nice little Skyway there, and we save it, and we can name it Test or whatever you'd like, test for now. Uh, you hit add this recording to episode and 
And I'm going to say not yet because I don't really want to publish this. But if I did want to publish it, I would hit the publish button there. I can enter the title episode, description, season, episode number, etc. Okay, so I hope that this has given you a nice idea of how to use this app. Uh, okay, everyone. So um, what I'm going to do is, again, just go through uh, a few of the things from the pre-work and see um, uh, in different intervals whether you have questions about them. Okay, so if you have questions about the tech, just keep them in mind for a little bit and, and we're going to go over any questions you might have about that. Okay, but for now, we're going to go ahead to the theoretical frameworks um, that uh, using podcasts supports. Okay, so uh, namely Mount, okay, and SoFla. All right, so um, basically how can we maximize the podcast um, using uh, this paradigm or how does this paradigm kind of go hand in hand with podcasting? Okay, so you see a little world there, all right? So the idea be behind a mutually adaptive learning paradigm is that it services pretty much uh, everyone who is trying to get an education, right? So people from cultures that have different learning styles to the westernized version of learning, right? And so how does this paradigm basically facilitate that and how does podcasting assist with that, okay? So um, first, uh, what are some of these uh, beliefs? Um, what are some of the hallmarks of the westernized education? So um, as you might have seen in the pre-work, um, they are, you know, this idea that uh, education is the key to your future, okay? And definitely if you've grown up in a westernized country, you understand that that's something that, um, you know, we are, we, we kind of grew up with this idea, right? And so, but students from other cultures, you know, maybe they need something more immediate, okay? They really need to understand that whatever it is that they're learning in the class is going to be relevant to them in that moment, right? Um, and also, um, you know, the idea definitely um, in American culture and society is this idea of independence. Um, you know, it's kind of like competition, um, you know, trying to be the best, showing that you're the best, confidence, confidence, <laughs> this type of thing, okay? Whereas, you um, you know, in other cultures, it's more collectivistic and there's more of a sense of kind of interdependence and, you know, uh, working together to, uh, to solve issues, solve problems. And this is also uh, in terms of academics as well. Um, and, and furthermore, of course, um, the idea is that, okay, well, everybody's literate, everybody, you know, comes from, from a culture where uh, writing, uh, you know, this is, this is just a given, right? And so, but um, there are some cultures where this may not be the case, or if you're dealing with students with limited or interrupted formal education, um, they might not really have a firm uh, grasp on, on that um, and might be more used to oral um, modes of transmission and of learning, et cetera. Okay, and so, uh, we are talking about how to bridge that gap, okay, with mouth. So um, now just kind of taking a look at how podcasting, uh, this podcasting project that I do with my students is able to kind of bridge that gap. Um, so the students basically listen to podcasts with topics that are very relevant um, to their lives now, okay? Um, they work together in terms of creating conversations um, uh, with the vocabulary that they've learned from the podcast. And uh, also in some instances, as you saw when I was talking about inviting uh, students to, uh, or inviting someone to, into a recording with you. So occasionally we have these collaborative episodes, okay? Um, and then finally, um, one of the ideas or one of the strategies that MALP uses is kind of combining or bridging familiar and unfamiliar learning processes. And so with podcasting, um, I have surveyed my students before uh, in terms of um, whether or not they create scripts before they actually um, go into recording their podcast and the, 
all of them pretty much said that they do. So uh, in producing podcasts, um, there is that element where, you know, you're writing and trying to figure out how you're going to structure uh, the podcast before you actually go into it. So um, during the pre-work, I uh, showed you guys um, a couple of, uh, or, or you were able to listen to a few examples of the podcast, but um, I'm going to play a different example uh, right now uh, so that you guys can kind of hear um, a, a, one of the a prompts that I gave the students um, was about um, keeping healthy during COVID, right? So during the pandemic. So um, definitely we can see that this is uh, obviously relevant uh, to right now. Okay, so they listened to a podcast um, on this and then I asked them to reflect and to record a podcast about how they were keeping themselves healthy during the pandemic. So we're just gonna go ahead and listen to one sample. I'm gonna go ahead and move this along a little bit because I would like us to listen to a specific uh, student's uh, example here. I don't wanna go past it though. It's about here. Okay, great. All right. Hello everyone, my name is Eliona Agai. It is my pleasure to be with you on our weekly podcast. In this week's podcast, I'm going to talk about how COVID affected my life and what I'm doing to keep my family and myself healthy. Since the beginning of the pandemic, I have picked up new habits to keep my family and myself healthy. Before the pandemic hit and I was working at my old job, I found that I was really tired after work. Now that I'm not working, I have a lot more time. However, now I have a lot more work around the house, along with all of my classes. I realized that your energy through, throughout the day is heavily related to the food you eat. This is why I have started to eat a filling breakfast much more often. Whether it be eggs with avocado toast, cereal or a breakfast sandwich, I try to eat something that will keep me going through my seemingly much longer day. Not only does this keep me energized, but it also much more nutrition compared to my previous routine of only drinking coffee in the morning. Additionally, I've also started making my own juice. I bought a juicer and I have started making carrot juice, apple juice, orange juice and other combinations. Making my own juice is much healthier than drinking store-bought ones, considering how much sugar is in the store-bought ones. On top of this, playing in part with the pandemic, I have made it a habit to remind my children and to wear their mask so they do not get sick, keeping all of us healthy. I also remind my children to wash their hands often throughout the school day, as soon as they get home from school and every time they eat, to reduce the risk of getting sick. I also make sure to clean my house more often to keep us safe and healthy. This is pretty much what I'm doing to keep my family and myself healthy during the heartless time. I hope you enjoyed this week's podcast and I hope to see you next week. Bye-bye. Okay, all right. So I think now is the time when I'm going to see if there are any questions uh, at this point. Okay, so I mean, I have a little bit more that I'm going to talk about, but I figure... Okay, so for right now, I'll go ahead and stop the share and see uh, if anyone has any questions. I see that some people have already responded to some of the questions that I wrote uh, for our discussion a little bit later, and that's great. Uh, but any, any questions uh, on what I have talked about so far? Yes, definitely. It's a tiny, tiny group. So please, <laughs> please just uh, open your mic and, <laughs> and, uh, and ask your question if you, if you have one, if you feel comfortable doing that. Okay. Yes, Ken. Ken's, so Ken yeah, I'll, right. I'll jump in. Yes, me. Okay. Um, oops, I closed up my camera. Um, what did your students find? 
to be the most difficult, like finding a topic or the technical parts or what, what, what was the kind of most difficult barrier for them? Well, I want to say that mm, maybe initially, it, it, I think just it being new, <laughs> something that mm -hmm. they hadn't done before. Yeah. Um, you know, so you can you can kind of sense there some of them you can sense the trepidation, but uh, others just you know because I furnished them with a couple of um, instructional videos uh, right. on this. I, I recorded myself um, uh, in two parts, giving them um, you know an example of how to use it, and so this was like their pre work. <laughs> okay, so before before the class, uh, right in the beginning of the class, I made it clear no books. We're just going to be using these podcasts. You're going to be mm -hmm. uh, recording a podcast. Here uh, are the, the instructions for that. And, you know, uh, some people, a lot of them came back and said, oh, yeah, it's, it seems pretty simple. <laughs> it seems pretty easy. Um, and so, but I think, yeah, just it being something new, maybe people were nervous at first. Um, mm -hmm. But in terms of the topics, I mean, i basically dictated what the topics <laughs> were going to be. Um, right. And, uh, and so that part, I didn't want to leave too much guessing up to them in terms of that, okay. except for the final project. So that, but by then that was the end of the semester. So they were familiar with many different types and styles of podcasts and many uh, topics that they could approach. And so it was easier for them to come up with their own concept for their final uh, for their final projects, which I'm going to sh uh, play an example of a one of the final projects that I thought nice. uh, was really great, different from the one on the pre-work. <laughs> so about how many recordings did they do before they went to the final project, each student? Uh, okay, so there was a podcast each week. Um, it's okay. just so happened that I went a little bit uh, crazy in the spring semester, and I had one for my conversation and listening class, as well as for my grammar class. It's a lot of I, listening. I don't know what uh, insanity I had going there. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but so, and it was the same class, you know, the same group of students doing both. And so. Oh um, yeah, even more. Yeah. So one of them obviously focused on using um, the grammar uh, points and the other one, you know, was focused on the topics that they had listened to, uh, you know, in the podcast. And, um, and so point being by the end of the semester, so it's a 14 week semester. And I think okay. I started with the first week. So maybe they had done like maybe 13, 12, 12 wow. or 13, maybe double that if they, if, because they're in the grammar Did class. you put a, did you put a cap on the maximum number of minutes? Cause that's what I had oh, a problem yes. with. I forgot. Oh, and then yes. they'd send me like 45 minutes. Oh, oh no. Massive, no, I, huge things. No, I made it very clear two to three. And they were happy with that because most of them, Good. you know, they were nervous enough that, to, you know, to have to be speaking in English <laughs> for, for really a, a long time. So um, I nice. told them two to three minutes, two to three minutes. And oh, of course lovely. that was the most I could really listen to <laughs> as well right. <laughs> so yeah okay nice. all right we also um, some questions in the chat here okay jump in maybe just a couple more questions before we kind of dive back into last bits maria or maria or mabel pablo carmen lane i see you there okay pablo Thanks for the camera. Hey, hey good afternoon, uh, Jasmine and, and everyone. Hello, Pablo. Hello. Uh, I, I got a question about uh, which is the, the subject that you are teaching or implementing this podcast is only the English subject, English as foreign language, or is an, another kind of subject that you are trying to, to, to teach with this? Okay, so uh, yes, uh, I teach English as a second language, and so um, the the two uh, skills classes that I that I've implemented this podcasting project in have been my listening and conversation class, as well as my grammar class. But yes, uh, all, all of the classes are geared towards um, uh, English language learners. Thanks, Jasmine. Appreciate. Sure, no cool. problem, Pablo. Uh -huh. I would add, you could add this in disciplines because I teach computing science and software engineering and computing security. And, and, and my students said, I, I don't want to write another essay. Can I record a <laughs> podcast? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. yeah, go for it. Go for it. I mean, let's be creative. So yeah, they can definitely do this in any format, I think. 
Yeah, I had students decide that instead of writing an analysis paper, they partnered up. And so for two different texts, they decided they were going to compare and kind of have a conversation back and forth about the research they found and that sort of thing. So it was a little longer than two and three minutes, but it was still really interesting to hear them engage with each other and bring in their research. Yeah, I think it's it's really what's really great uh, nowadays um, in terms of the, the learning process and assessments is that it's so multimodal. I mean, I really love that aspect because, I mean, uh, sometimes people express themselves better <laughs> um, when they're when they're speaking about something, you know, it doesn't mean that they know any less about the topic because they, you know, maybe aren't that great with writing a cohesive <laughs> essay, but maybe they can, you know, manage to explain it really well. So um, this is the idea uh, also behind what I was talking about with the uh, mutually adaptive uh, learning paradigm, this idea that, you know, everything doesn't have to be this kind of prescribed way <laughs> um, in terms of learning styles, et cetera. Okay, so, uh, Let's go ahead and uh, move just a little bit forward. And okay, so what do we have next? Sofla. Okay, <laughs> all right. So um, of course, this is uh, the flip, <laughs> which is all about flip tech. Okay, and uh, Sofla, of course, is the synchronous online flipped learning approach. Okay, so we have double the treat when we uh, combine the eight steps of Sofla um, with podcasting. Okay. So um, this is basically uh, kind of a side by side of how the steps of self law really match up um, or, or can, can be implemented uh, if you are doing podcasting. Okay. So um, the idea here, of course, while this slide is up, I'm just going to see if anyone has questions about uh, any of these steps. So I'm just going to give you guys a few moments if anybody has still questions. have a gray box. I don't gray know if maybe box. that's a chat or something that's not being shared, but it's blocking. You, now, yeah, you, what about now? Now it's blocking the right side of Maximum. Yeah, blocking. it is. All right. I got it. I know what it is. It's my, um, it's the, uh, there. So it's yeah. the, uh, the Zoom. You're hiding the URLs. Zoom. Uh, stuff. of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's the Zoom, uh, <laughs> the Zoom box. Let me see. I'll move it down here to the bottom so everything's. Uh, you can, yeah, it's perfect. Everything Thank now. you so much. Okay, great. Perfect. Great. Okay. So yes. Um, any questions about about this? So the way that I, I'll, I'll just <laughs> talk a little bit about it. So uh, the way that I, um, I mean, initially facilitated my podcasting project uh, wasn't necessarily um, in the sense of having students listen to the podcast before class, okay? Mm -hmm. So what I was doing, what, I, what I've done um, is really have the students listen to the podcasts in class because um, especially the first half of the semester, um, I was doing a podcast specifically geared towards um, English language learners. And so there were maybe like a minute and a half worth of conversation that they would listen to immediately right in class and then kind of, you know, think and, and come up with a summary kind of right there on the spot, right? So, but if I'm going to implement this in, um, in terms of SOFLA and I want some really valuable pre-work, then I would probably um, go ahead and select, um, and which, you know, during my original uh, protocol, I did have some podcast geared towards native English speakers. And so, uh, if I were to do do this, I would have um, the podcast definitely be like a native, um, a, a gear towards a native speaker type of podcast because otherwise um, the ones that are geared towards um, um, second language learners um, tend to have all the answers in them. I mean, <laughs> um, you know, at the end of the conversation, then they explain all the vocabulary, et cetera. And if I want the students to kind of, you know, go on this kind of discovery, of meaning, then I would use authentic podcasts in, in the pre-work for them to listen to, then summarize, and then um, answer some comprehension questions, and then follow that up with some kind of pronunciation exercise, particularly if I'm doing this for a 
uh, a conversation and listening class because yeah, as we know pronunciation this is of course important to both um you know, taking in information and also uh, your output right and so um for the sign in activity, uh, of course, they would answer some personalized questions about the podcast. So uh, this would be on a whiteboard. Okay. Um, so yeah, what were some of the most important points to you? Or what was hard to understand? Is there a portion that you feel as though you didn't uh, get uh, in the conversation or in the podcast? Um, or just general thoughts on the topic? So um, as the whole group application, we would talk about the the podcaster style. Um, so, you know, is it a solo podcast? Is it like an interview podcast? Is it a conversational uh, between two friends? Is it like a reporting style? So definitely to just kind of um, analyze the podcast um, in terms of prep and all of that, um, and then go into breakouts. And um, so right now with the, the methodology that I use, um, I first I have them define a vocabulary um, in groups and, you know, put it into Google Docs, uh, put the definitions into Google Docs. Um, and then usually it's by the next class um, that they uh, that they're asked to create uh, conversations um, using that vocabulary uh, because because of timing. So all of that normally doesn't happen within um, one class period. Um, and then, of course, the share out would be them either performing conversations or sharing the definitions and having clarification. Now, the next three steps um, are basically to whet their appetite um, for what's coming um, next. This is super cyclical, um, which is why, of course, you see uh, the SOFLA, the, the logo kind of going in a circular motion, as well as um, my maximizing the podcast kind of going in a very uh, cyclical type of nature. And so, um, yes, yeah, so of course, the preview and discovery assignment instructions and uh, those two are, I mean, they're definitely very similar to steps in the pre-work. Uh, kind of talking about the topic. And then of course, just a general reflection of everything um, that they've learned or that, that we've discussed at that point. So that would be how that goes. And so, so um, again, I'm going to ask if there are any questions. I'm going to stop the share and find out if you guys. <laughs> Don't be shy. If there are no questions, that means I've done a super job of <laughs> explaining. <laughs> That's how I'm going to look at that. But Absolutely. but but I'm 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 very open to any any questions that you do have. Okay. Silence. Silence. Um, I'm going to go ahead because I think that I do. I think this is the point where. Um, I have uh, another uh, example, all right? Okay, so this is pretty much uh, the last example. And this, I really thought that this uh, project was amazing. Just, <laughs> I mean, some of the work these students came up with is just really, really great. Um, okay, so I asked them to come up with the artwork um, for this project. I asked them to come up with uh, the concept um, for nice. the podcast um, to write a, a description. So they've written all of this. The more that we know, the better we live. They they wrote all of this. <laughs> okay, the description here uh, they wrote. Okay, and we're gonna play, wait, this is maybe about six minutes. We'll play some of this, okay. Um, but yeah, I thought that this was really great. Nice. Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of this podcast. My name is Alejandra and today we're going to talk about a topic that I consider really important, health and sports. For that, I want to introduce you to a very special guest. From Colombia to the world, John Jairo Salazar, professional in sports science and football soccer athlete. Welcome John and thank you for your time. Hi Ale, thanks for inviting me and I'll be glad to answer all your questions. So I would like to talk about physical activity, exercise and sports. First of all, is there any difference between those three concepts? Yes, there are a lot of difference among these words. You may have heard that a lot of people use them as a synonymous to each other when they talk about health. And somehow they are right and wrong, but mostly wrong. 
So the first thing which you have clear is the concept of physical activity because it is wider. Physical activity is basically any movement that is more demanding than being in bed. Getting out is a bed is physical activity. What you are saying is that walking, opening the fridge, petting my dog, or even grabbing my phone is physical activity? Exactly. We don't realize the cost of energy because a lot of those actions are so simple for us, but for our body and ourselves is a huge process that means converting what we eat into potential energy for movement. Got it. How about exercise? That is for sure something that requires energy. Yes, exercise is physical activity but with two big characteristics, intensity and intention. Look, keep in mind that the world's biggest killers are heart diseases, a lot of them because of sedentary lifestyle or unbalanced nutrition. So when you dosify the physical activity, let's say for example three times a week swimming 30 minutes, you have intensity. And when you do it because you want to reduce your probability of getting ill or to improve your life's quality, you are having intention to. With those two things, intention and intensity, you're dosing physical activity. Therefore, you're doing exercise. Just with that? I'll add a third one, which is the expert. This person will take your medical conditions, the, the goals you want to achieve, the physical activities you like, and will guide you with safely through all this process. Young people are usually seeking for a six pack or a big butt, but there's a lot of people that just want to live better, like the ones with high blood pressure, arthritis, obesity, diabetes. It's really important to go through this process hand by hand with an expert so you reduce the risk, achieve your goals faster, and have fun in the process. Let me give you an example and ask you something. I work five times a week in an office at the top of the building. If I use the, the stairs instead of the elevator once per day, five times a week, with the clear intention of having stronger legs and reducing some fat, am I doing exercise? Absolutely. I will just recommend you to have an expert, analyze your conditions, your technique, check your nutrition and suggest more activities to achieve your goals so you don't quit because... <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so <laughs> uh, let's go ahead with any, uh, or maybe we can discuss uh, some of the uh, questions um, that I put into the chat earlier or any other questions that you guys have at this point. Okay, so... Yeah, I dropped a question there. Yeah, I mean, yes, were they yes. physically co-located or were they using Zoom or what? What were they using for, for um, their recording? This, or did you know? I, I'm trying to. <laughs> I, I, I mean, every student could have used a different were, tool. I mean, um, I'm trying to. I, I think that uh, they were in different locations. She invited him, you know, via mm -hmm. the, the Anchor app in order to do this, but- Okay, they did it with Anchor I, I think so. Okay. I think this is, a, this, this is what happened. I don't, yeah, because uh, at that time things weren't, I mean, it was still spring, things weren't so open. So I don't yep. think they were like, you know, meeting to, like this <laughs> in this in a situation where she was talking to him right, <laughs> right next to her. Yeah. Um, yeah, because this was still like maybe Mark, Mark. No, I, I know you can do that with Anchor, yeah. but I found yeah. that's why I like to use video chat for my mm. podcast recording because I can see the other yeah. person and we can really communicate better with video. Um, yeah. And then they would always ask, you're not going to release this video, right? And I'm like, no, don't worry. I'm just <laughs> using it to record the audio. Um, yeah, you're bringing up a really, really good point, uh, Ken, because uh, just recently, I think it was yeah, yesterday, um, someone uh, was interviewing me for their podcast, and they decided to use Zoom um, to do this. Um, and so and she said that, you know, it's good as a backup um, as well, you know, because if you have the you have the audio, but then you also have the video file that you can, you know, take the audio Right. You need that. Um, and I think it's also great if, you know, whatever your purposes are, you know, you decide to um, use the video, have a dual purpose. So to use right. the video to upload to YouTube. And, and so yep. you have your podcast and then you all, you have your material already for YouTube, if that's something that you're interested in doing. And so it's something I hadn't considered before, mm -hmm. but um, I think if I were to uh, start any 
other type of project is something that I might do because it is uh, the the idea of seeing the person face to face uh, it, it can really uh, change things a little bit uh, too. <laughs> so. It made such a difference, and and I, only one of my episodes that I ever recorded, the last one, as it turned out, um, I'm on hiatus. But the last one, um, the the guest wanted me to release it, um, uh, right? The YouTube right. recording. So and, he, and mm -hmm. he's really famous in in, in media, so um, he, he liked to share that with his followers. So it was really cool to to release one that ended up being a video, but it wasn't planned. So it's, it's kind of weird because we probably weren't thinking that the video would be released while we're recording. And I don't know if I was doing weird things with my hands, but uh, yeah, I think it's really important to do that. And um, really good production quality. I'm really, really impressed with that. Better than mine for sure. Really? Uh, <laughs> you mean with Anchor? <laughs> with Anchor? No, the, the students, the production was really oh, the well. Students, I, mean, I, Anchor, I really that's just what kind of using. Anchor I I really it. winged my podcast. Mine were okay. very conversational and, okay. and not scripted, mm -hmm. but that's what I aimed for. Um, and I kind of tried to put like intro music and stuff, but I wasn't really good at it, but it was really well done. Well, this I is like the thing it. about about Anchor is that you know, the music is just there already. Yeah. You know, it's a matter of you kind of choosing according to the mood that you want to have, uh, you know, in, in the podcast episode. And the students were really good at doing that. At, you know, a lot of them, they, they would choose some upbeat music. Uh, they, they became more comfortable with the creativity um, as the episodes uh, went along. Right. Yeah, that would have made it easy. I haven't used it before. So mine was all very homegrown production. Yeah. And, and manual forcing myself to learn tools was part of the process. So okay. interesting. Interesting. Oh. Other questions? I see Mabel nodding and nodding there and Pablo's there. Maria Armenia, tal vez. Switch between languages. I don't know if Lane's there. I'm thinking she she came in to check things out. Okay. Anyone else had podcasting right, in classrooms? Is, that was part of your yeah. questions there. Yeah, I would like to know uh, if anyone else is, is, is engaged in doing a podcast. Does anyone have their own podcast as an educator or, uh, or facilitating projects like this in their classrooms? Uh, you raised your hand, Pablo. Yes, Jasmine, for me, this is kind of new the, about the podcast. Uh, we were working during pan pandemic with uh, WhatsApp audios. They just re record themselves, but we didn't uh, move to a, to a podcast or, or some, I, I, I believe it was more complex, mm -hmm. but as you show us, the Anchor.fm does pretty much most of the work. You just mm -hmm. have to put the content, but the, the tool is pretty useful and complete also. Yes, yes. I wanted to also say, you know, uh, in my video on the, the app, I only showed you the um, where you can splice the, the first part and the ending part of the uh, audio. But there's also an edit audio where you can, you know, splice out sections. <laughs> um, you know, of course, this is a little bit more timely, et cetera. But, um, you know, sometimes I've done it uh, with the, you know, other classes where maybe the students were a little more shy or they, they took, they were, they had a, a lot more pausing perhaps. Um, and I would like go in there and just cut that out. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so definitely you do have, it's very limited editing ability, but it's definitely there um, as well, if you want to do that. That's great. And, and I got a question about your, your shy students now that you're uh, talking about it. And the, the, how long does, does it take the shy students to, to enroll or set on track to start uh, doing the, the podcast? Um, I kind of scare them into doing it. No, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> they, no, I mean, they, they do it, you know, like everyone, the first, when I, you know, I said, okay, record it. You know, they all did it. Um, it was just a difference in terms of, you know, obviously the confidence level uh, when, when you listen to the recording, right? So it, when you, you could hear, you know, how confident they felt or if they were, you know, a little bit nervous in doing it. And 
really but they still did it you know so so kudos to them for you know for still doing it and you know i i provided feedback on you know a few things here there and as they moved along all of them just you know really improved um even the shyest students i mean from the, the first uh podcast episode up until the one at the end of the semester um, you know, you could really tell the difference that they had gotten more comfortable uh, with the situation. <laughs> yeah, especially, I mean, it's part of the class and I, I grade it, you know, I say, well, you're not going to have tests, but this is what you're going to be graded on. So you should try to do them. <laughs> um, that's and, and that's it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I mean, I, I planned for this to be about about a 45 minute uh, session because I, I am teaching this evening. Um, so, uh, yes, I'm wondering, yes, if, if anyone else. Sorry, I well didn't answer when everyone can should talk to me. Everyone ahead, was Maria. Just, yes, sorry, I'm from Argentina. Uh, I was just trying to figure out um, uh, how you were using this podcast because I joined a little bit later. I, I was with um, a group of students. Now I realize that they they, they are they, they were made by students. Mm -hmm. Isn't that so? Yes. Now that's I correct. got it. Yes. yes. That's yeah. why you shouldn't join once <laughs> <laughs> everything has started because I couldn't figure it out. I say we're happy to have you. We're happy to. Sorry, I didn't answer. Thank you for joining. Thank you, yes. for joining. No. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> There's such power in letting students do their productions. I, I'm sorry, sure. I cut you off, Lane. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I just I just wanted to mention if you didn't watch the pre-work, it's fabulous. And it it, you know, it's it gives you much, much more detail and background and more examples. And it's really worth it. It's wonderful. It's it's I mean, it's long. It's it's all what is it? 20 25 minutes, 25. 20, I think yeah. I, I recorded 25 minutes or so. I, I will do it. I will do it because it's interesting. Thank Listen, you very much. <laughs> yeah, you will not regret that 25 minutes, I guarantee. Okay. Thank you. Thank well, you, Helene. Thank you so much, Helene. <laughs> her bit emojis. I'm so you know weird about that, but they're her bit emojis keep changing and they're fabulous. She's <laughs> She's helping me with mine. <laughs> Lovely. I need to find that bat. That bat is right up my alley. The bat? Yeah. Oh, you like oh, the bat? That's I, I was nervous about. I was like, this is a little dark to put this, but I was like, oh, I that's me flip. all day. I love that the bat is flipped. And that's why I, I just went on and put her in there. <laughs> I've Lovely. got a sign outside my classroom that says, Welcome foolish mortals. So that's perfect for me. Oh, I'm definitely putting oh. that into my stuff. All right. Lovely. All right. <laughs> I don't even know how I, I think, did I put flip? You know how you have to do a little search to see what type of bitmoji you're gonna, I think, I, I don't even know what I wrote to get that bad, quite frankly. Oh, I think perfect. maybe flipped or upside down or something. <laughs> and that's love what it. it gave me, yeah. Excellent. So Ken has put in the chat, the link to Tuesday's conference survey. Um, so there's that as well. He has also plunked in there the video link to check out Yasmin's amazing pre-work video. Um, and I mean, for, for planning to make it a 45 minute session, Yasmin, you are at 644 in the Eastern time. So that's about <laughs> as perfect a timing plan goes as I've ever seen. And those um, that haven't played with audio, try it. It's, it's the students yeah. I found have really loved it and, and they've had a good time with it. I have, I've had students do videos before and and some of them were shy about being on the video and, and they would just do like background images while they were recording when they released videos for me, if they, were, they didn't want to be on camera and that's fine. Um, but I think audio is just, it's a different medium and, and it's something we all enjoy. Um, we share, my, my daughter started playing albums and it was kind of weird. Um, but like this, we, this is the way we used to listen to music before. <laughs> um, um, we, we all have deep connections with audio, I think, and, and, it, and, it, and the students really do enjoy it, in my experience. So this is great. Has anyone talked about the, the captioning or translation? Not here, not, not in this. It's really important and it's, it's you know, hard. In another language, you know, if you're trying to, getting the audio without seeing someone's lips and seeing the nonverbal, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a great skill to develop, but on the- I captions can be helpful if they're 
different yeah. levels and maybe someone could access a podcast with just that extra of the captions. Yeah. Or so I would like I would like to make a statement on that in terms of Zoom, uh, because it, obviously if you use Zoom, then you also have the transcript there. Right. Yeah. So, yes. you know, you, you that that's you're definitely able to to do that if that's the, the medium that you decide to use in order depending to depending on the configuration podcast. and the account mm -hmm. services you offer as well. Oh, if they okay. have different pricing okay. structures for different <laughs> systems. OK, it's 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 strange. I don't know. I, I'm using my school's account and yeah. so they have what I need. And that's yeah. OK, we did uh, at the start and then that got cut out. And I think it was a financial decision and which is really unfortunate because I loved it, especially when I was podcasting, because I would download the transcript and it was pretty good, um, except when we would jump back and forth between English and Spanish and mess it up. It's good for oh. students because if the yeah. captions are wrong, they can tell their pronunciation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That too. Okay, the everybody. Automated well, YouTube. I have, I thank you so hop, much, Yasmin. So, um, <laughs> uh, thank you I'm going to cut so the recording here. Me.